Hi everyone, and welcome to the uh, second episode of uh, Animal Psychic. And um, I'm Michael Lamport. Um, I'm the uh, producer and narrator of the uh, psychic show Rescue Mediums. And with me is uh, Jackie Dennison, who is the, uh, the ho host of Rescue Mediums. <clears throat> Sorry, it's not COVID, it's just my throat. It's a frog. It's a frog in your throat because we've got the animal psychic with us, Mike. Yes, and we have Jackie Weaver. So maybe she can read the frog in my throat. <laughs> croak up, croak up. <laughs> so, um, Jackie D, um, why don't, because what we're going to talk about today is uh, some of the celebrities, um, in addition to some other stuff that Jackie Weaver has uh, visited. So, I don't know how you want to start this off, guys. Well, do you know, one of my all-time uh, favourite celebrities is uh, William Roach uh, from Coronation Street. I mean, he's such a lovely, or he comes across as being such a lovely spiritual guy. And you've met him, Jackie, haven't you? And you've uh, yes. worked with his dog. So how, how did that come about? How did, how did it oh, happen? It never you, just happens to be, does it? But how it did does it happen? Yeah. Beautifully chatting to a lady that I'd done quite a lot of work for um, on a horse. And um, it was just bizarrely, she, I just said, oh, if I, if I could get hold of um, Bill from Corey, because I said, he's so spiritual, I'm sure he'd love, you know, what I do. And she goes, oh, funny enough, she says, one of the girls in Coronation Street was getting married and she was going to the wedding. So she said, <laughs> give me a book, I'll pass it to Bill. She passed the book to Bill, Bill phoned me, and it went from there. So wow. beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And he is the most genuine, lovely, lovely man. And obviously mm. I had to prove what I did was real. And I went to his house and chatted to three dogs. And when you're, you've got three different animals with three different personalities, that's when you, you know, can show that actually we're not just guessing bits of information. And we had such, you know, such a laugh, actually. It was such great fun. And Are you, um, are you allowed to tell us what, what they said about him? Oh yeah, it's in my book. Anything in my book is free to the public or whatever. But um, oh, lots of things. One of the um, things that did make me laugh is because in, in my celebrity book, I'd always sort of say to them, if they weren't an actor or whatever they're doing, um, what do you think they would be? And he's, one of the dogs went, oh, um, he'd be an artist and sort of starts to draw this picture. And then he went, but he never finishes anything. And Bill just looked at me and he pointed at a door and he said, through that door, there's a picture on an easel that I haven't finished. <laughs> it's been like that for two years. Yeah. Did, so didn't, that was... didn't, didn't one of the dogs as well, because I've read that, that book, and it is absolutely a fascinating uh, book oh, yes. uh, to read. Um, uh, it, in that, didn't the dog, one of the dogs say something about the amount of reading material, about the books that he reads? and he doesn't... Oh, yes. He yeah, and reading. he starts one book, he gets halfway through, and then he just starts another, and he's got all these books in the go, and they're like, why don't you just read one book at a time? Oh yeah. my goodness. Oh my. I, I, I think you'd relate to that. You, you've got to be very careful, I think, um, when you have pets, because they know more about you than you think they do. Absolutely. Because they observe and you all the time, don't they? So true. And doing this job, I had no idea until I started doing this how much they take notice of our lives. They can even tell you things that go on at your work. And people go, but my dog doesn't come to my work. Exactly. However, we carry pictures in our mind. So that's how telepathy works. So if you come home from work and maybe talk to a partner about it or just think about a situation, your animal can read your mind. I'll tell you, one of the funniest things that I had was standing in a stable, chatting to a horse as you do. And she told me that the owner had a bad back. So I said to him, have you got a bad back? And she said, yeah. And the horse said, it's your mattress that's the problem. And the owner went, she's never been in my bedroom. I said, no. And then I got a picture of the mattress complete with the buttons and the material around the buttons. So I described it. She said, that's my mattress. I said, well, that's what's causing the problem with your back. According to your horse. And she was just like, and I was like, I don't know where that came from either, but it did. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, that is amazing. Now, the, 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 the dogs that you read for with um, William's dogs, um, I think one was a little girl and the other two were little little boys. boys yeah. Well, she could hold her own, that little girl, couldn't oh, she? she was in charge. Absolutely. Yeah. 
yeah. yeah. She really was sort of, I'm in charge. And amazingly, um, Bill's daughter's very much into healing. And that little dog, you know, was like very, getting senior ears really poorly. And his daughter did wonders and absolutely, you know, rejuvenated her and stuff completely. Just, you know, blew people out of the water of like her healing powers. And also, um, the lovely thing is that animals will bring up um, about how they appreciate like people's spirit, well, sort of their open spiritual understanding and stuff. And yeah, that little dog was amazing. And then gradually, like the other two, you know, they went to heaven, but it was so beautiful because they'd had their, their say and then they went to heaven and then the next one. And yeah. So, well, when you deal with three dogs like that, um, or any, anything, do you find that some, uh, I guess I'll call them breeds, because that's what we know them as, yeah. uh, some breeds are easier to communicate than others? Um, no, they've all got their own personality. So it's like a person, it's how that person wants to come across. If the person's sort of quite quiet in life and sort of whatever, then they might be a bit slow passing information and they might be a bit whatever, but then you'll get the real like forward yeah, ones and blah, stuff. Blah, and blah, 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 like, blah. Yeah, yeah, I'm in there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And very, Bill's dogs were so funny. It was so animated. And one of the dogs, it was like, it was, he's like, I'm the person that like, would sort of greet people at the door. And he was like, oh, yes, come in. And it was so <laughs> wonderful. I Such think you, fun. You, you called him the director, I think, didn't you? You said he's like that's the it, director. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's a lovely thing is I didn't call him that. The dog called him that himself. Right. Yeah. So, and they will refer to themselves in certain ways. One of the funniest ones I had this week, and sometimes you have to Google things, but a horse who is just the most amazing character said, um, chatting away about himself, I've chatted on team times, and he's just said, I don't exude sweat. <laughs> How posh is that? We both Googled exude, and actually it just, yeah, it was the right word, but yes, he doesn't, and she's, no, he doesn't sweat, but he had to put a posh word in. <laughs> Yeah. love it absolutely love it and you yeah. know they are such characters um, and one of them i think one of uh, his dogs di didn't you say um that this dog has a character that all of a sudden he would just go to sleep and bill said well hmm, i don't know about then the dog just fell asleep and then you yeah. carried on communicating with yes, their mind. absolutely, to their mind. And yeah. then um, it was something to do with, um, he was, I can't quite remember, but he started dreaming. And I said to him, so what are you dreaming about? Just for a laugh. And he said, I'm riding a bicycle. And then he started, his legs going on a bicycle. It was just, <laughs> it was just so funny. It was just so funny. That's so funny. sweet. Yes. Have, you ever have, you, have you ever had a communication, an animal communication? I know you've done lots of humans. Um, with Michael? I, I was thinking about that and I am not yeah. sure, but I feel that I have, but I can't actually put my finger on it. Gotcha. Yeah. Michael, well, Michael you did in, in when we were filming in Nova Scotia and um, you, uh, if I were at Churchill Mansion and you saw a dog, physically saw a dog um, go through a doorway that oh, yeah, I remember that's you. Right. Do you remember? And yes. you said to me, I did a double take, I've just, it looked real. And you were quite blown away by that. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll get o owners who actually will see their pets after they've passed. And it's so momentary, but it's just enough. And as soon as you kind of recognize what they are, they're gone. But it's they're just gone. enough for them to let you know that they're there. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think another thing that they do, Jackie, if, if you've... Um, when uh, one of my uh, my first cat passed and the second is I remember lying in the bed and feeling I thought feeling them their paws on me now I don't yeah. know if that was just a dream or if it was them just letting me know they're still around at the Rainbow Bridge or something I don't know absolutely it can happen and like Rainbow Bridge is like just to give us a physical or a mental thought like yeah. heaven i use heaven because it's just a word to help us think of but what jack has kindly done um sent a picture through of oliver your cat okay so i thought if you want to have um i haven't even managed to tune into him because i only got a picture about five minutes ago but um if i just tell people kind of how it works then we'll just go quickly with the flow and just see what comes up yeah That'd be fantastic right. So the way this works is I get like pictures, a feeling about something. All I do is just turn around in my head, 
So you want to think, see, hear, smell, whatever he gives me, I will give to you. And the information I've got from you is obviously, well, from Jackie is the name of him. We know he's a boy because, to be honest, I don't care if they're boys and girls because most are neutral. Um, and he turned up at yours and you've had him, you've told me about four years, but I'm kind of going, I think he's around about six years old, but he's not a young cat, he's not an old cat, so he's an in-between. Right, so... Um, what I'm going to do is just tune with him. Let's see what we can pick up from his point of view. So just hang on a second. Um, <laughs> it's quite funny. He just said to me, I'm certainly not demanding, but I get what I want. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very, very true. And he said to me, um, like in the house, complete freedom. So he's allowed round your house, anywhere he wants to be. Everywhere. Okay. Um, he spends a lot of the time glued to a window looking out from the inside out. Yep. He's just, his nose is like very close. Yep. Um, and he gives me a sort of a bit of a lazy feel about him because I kind of feel if a fly flew up, he'd be like, yeah, can't be bothered. <laughs> yeah, I think that's true. I mean, he watches them, but, yeah, but it's sort of like, meh. Yeah, can't be bothered. <laughs> right, right. Um, Although I've got a bit, I do think he's got like quite a good bit of weight on him, like a, quite a uh, rounded tummy, shall we say. Yes. Yeah. He said he's not super fussy and he makes me feel like he's got like uh, like ad lib kibble biscuits type things. He can go backwards and forwards to as he pleases. Yes, he does. That's exactly right. Okay. He also says to me, birds are safe with me. So would he not catch a bird? Again, he'd look, but I don't feel he's a hunter. Well... It, it's interesting that he's saying that because maybe he's trying to deny it <laughs> because uh, the thing is I have seen him uh, I have a bird feeder in the back garden and he right. is crouched by it and in that sort of uh, stance that the, the cats use you know before they hunt or attack he, he's done it many times and he I have uh, recovered two birds from him but one was alive and it flew away and the other one, sadly, was uh, kaput. Okay. But as he puts it, I haven't given you a pile of birds. So he's no. not... No, 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 no. Oh, bless. Okay. Um, not my phone number. Um, um, but I also think that he, he's not a wander-off cat. He kind of sort of does his circle of his own garden and back home. That's very true. Yeah. Because yes. he's saying to me, I chose this. I chose this. So it's yes. kind of like he chose your home. And he wanted to stay there. Yes, I think you're absolutely right, Jackie. And the thing about it is that um, my uh, previous two cats were not outdoor cats because I think that there's always a problem having uh, an outdoor cat for their own safety. Yes. But um, he is 50% uh, outdoors, 50% indoors. Yeah. But you're right. He doesn't go too far. Less. And he always comes in at a decent time. Good. And I always say to animals, to, especially to cats, is always make sure you can see your house. Wherever you are, you need to be able to see your house. Huh. But if this is of any help to anybody, I've now, I'm quite into DIY, I've built at least three safety gardens for cats. So you can actually do a safe area where you can actually have like, say, wire out and horizontal. A cat cannot go up, turn around and out like that. So uh, my cat has a garden, but he can't get out. So I've lost one to the road and I just... You know, know that if a cat's not in the house, he's in the garden. That's so, really cool. Yeah. So anybody worried about that, you can look it up and it's quite easy. Um, I do think, according to him, that he's a healthy boy because he said, I've got a strong constitution. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. think that's true. Yeah. And does he have like his own cushion or pillow to sleep on? I think it's a cushion. <laughs> not yeah. quite that. <laughs> he's got a cushion, a blanket. Um, 10,000 toys and uh, yeah he's, he's got his own little world. Oh bless but toys makes me laugh because I kind of think he plays you up slightly in the fact of like the oh uh, oh look I'll start playing and then go and just walk off. Yeah he's done <laughs> he that said, several times. He says to tell you the toys are more for you than him. <laughs> <laughs> oh bless. <laughs> Going back, is there a, a like, um, I want to go like a sort of a white and torty coloured cat in your past? Uh, is she, 
it's a she I'm sure or related to him or something there's a light colored cat um with like some sort of speckles of color do you know who that would be um the only one I can think that that would be was the 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 last one that passed which I called uh, Womble that's because I'm the voice of two of the Wombles and um and she had a a, a ginger coat with sort of white specks around it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the look that I'm getting, and I thought it was a she. Yeah, um, yeah. But to me, she passes through the house, and like sometimes he'll be like, oh, and it's just because she's passed through. Yeah, I've often wondered why he uh, sometimes just stops what he's doing and he just yeah. looks. Yep. Yep, she's just wandering through. So again, yeah. it's like acknowledge her, and he does it. He's letting you know, and you can say hi. You know. Yeah, yes. yeah, that's a good point. And he, he just said, from his heart, he just said, I'm with you forever. So, you know, you're his dad, you know, and, um, nice. and he said, I just know where the love is. Okay. Well, he hasn't said anything bad about me, so I won't, I won't give him <laughs> a hug when he comes in. <laughs> uh, he said to say, it's not bad, all, but he just said to say, you've got an ear for everyone. So as a person, you're a really kind listener, apparently, according to your cat. Hmm. <laughs> that's nice. Jackie might know better than me. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's very true. That is very true. Um, if Michael can be there for someone, he absolutely is. You know, so you can yeah. contact him at any time and he is, he's there for you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would agree well. with that. Yes. Yeah. So there you go. There's a mini reading for you, Michael. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Jackie. You're and, very uh, well. I'll have a talk with Oliver when, uh, when he gets in. <laughs> can, I, can I just ask something uh, on the back of that? You know when you, you yes. were saying that um, you uh, like to ask uh, the pets, you know, uh, if your, uh, what, you know, if your owner wasn't doing this job, what job would they do? Ooh, can, you ask, can you ask Oliver that, that please? Yeah. Now, weirdly, I have no idea, Michael, why, but I don't know if you like cranes, because I've just seen a picture of like a big crane and stuff, so I don't know if you've got any interest in that type of thing. No, I don't think so, because I, I don't really like heights. That's weird. No, yeah, you wouldn't be very high as the crane is. That's weird. Um, just know that for a past life or something, because I don't know why that's come up. Clear, straight in, he just put that. Um, oh, but then he's saying, like, it's like, it's okay. He's saying it's like doing something to clear something to start new. So it's like, I don't know whether like to projects of starting something, start something new. So the crane is like, you know, putting stuff in oh, place, I moving think. stuff about. I, I think there could be some truth with that because uh, through my life I've done certain things and then just got rid of it and started something new. Yeah, absolutely. Start, put something in and start again. Yes, yeah, so maybe yeah. that's what he's talking about. Oh, well how, done. how do you think animals um, can actually uh, interpret that? Because uh, they're being psychic as well. Absolutely. Because all children, we're all born psychic, we're all born open, as you well know. And animals are all open as well. The only reason that people become non-psychic is out of embarrassment. Like, you know, a child sees a you know, spirit child and they'll say, oh, I've got an imaginary friend. And people say, oh, don't be so silly, don't tell anybody. They right. shut down. Nobody says to Nano, oh, of course you can't see spirit animals. Of course you can't talk. You know, you get a French horse, a German horse. They can still communicate. And you can also, you know, interspecies as well. So nobody shut them down. So often, like, in a reading, sometimes I get information where I have no idea what it really means. But I believe that they actually have, they can get information, like, from somewhere else and then give it to me. Yeah. I, that's fascinating. Have you ever... I know this is completely out of the blue, but have you ever um, made a joke with a horse? Like, sort of like, a, hey, how come the long face? <laughs> uh, no, but they do, they do have like a sense of humor. And back to information, say even today, is, and at the end of it, I said, oh, I'll have to Google that. A cat was 20 years old and said to me, and I actually, I, mean, I picked up a slight wrong, but said to me, that um, I said, I just, oh, I wonder how many, you know, percentage your cats get to 20. And I picked up 5%. So I said to the owner, can I Google this? So I Googled it and it came up and I actually screenshotted it and it said 0.5%. Wow. So I was, I was very near. So you think, well, how would a cat know that? But she well, did. 
Exactly. Yeah. Maybe cats have their own Google thing. When we're asleep, they go up and they turn on the computer. That's <laughs> why I've got so I have a lot of fur on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> chase the password, chase the password. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now, that would be weird me? because my password is uh, two, three of my cat's names. So oh, they must know the password. <laughs> I wonder they can get in. <laughs> and funny enough, mine's related to a horse as well. It's funny, isn't it? We just no. follow our animals. Yeah. Can I ask you about um, Stephanie Beecham? Because um, one of the stories that I've read in your book, uh, she tells a great story um, about, um, I think it's her dog with... Uh, raccoons on a roof <laughs> yeah and she was trying to she was trying to get me to tell the dog not to go for the raccoon because it will come off worse but you know the the amazing thing was when we were doing the skype because i don't have to go to their places i went to bill because he's in this country she was in america so i was in Shropshire at the time and she was on skype or like this and basically she had you know, I can believe it, this little dog, and she was like lifting this little dog up in her hand. And I was like, whoa, and she's chatting away, the tiny little one she rescued. But so beautifully, when she rescued it, it was um, transported in like a Louis Vuitton uh, suit uh, carrier and everything. So this dog went from just being rescued to from the, the pits of rubbish <laughs> to this absolute lifestyle. But yeah, she was delightful. What a lovely, lovely lady. Mm. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, it was so funny, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting, <laughs> them raccoons, though, because you don't... Um, I was born in England, and I, I remember uh, that uh, there are no raccoons in nope. England. There's no. badgers and yeah. stuff like that, but there's no raccoons. You don't want a badger in your loft. <laughs> no. And I have, like, six raccoons under my deck that come out <laughs> at night and just look in the window, and uh, Oliver sees them, and he goes up to the window. Wow. But, uh, it's almost like they... It, it's funny speaking to you because it's almost like they are communicating. Yeah, absolutely. And all animals can communicate from, from birds to, I've chatted to a skunk. It was a pet skunk. But yeah, <laughs> I've already got my book in it. It's a skunk. Yeah, amazing, amazing pet. Yeah. So all, all, all different types of animals. Yeah. And it's all about thought, isn't it? It's all thought transfer, isn't it? A absolutely. Yeah. Completely. So it's like I say on a, like people, and I understand people think, oh, this is impossible. But I say mm -hmm. scientifically, when information comes, say I'm talking to you, you don't actually hear my voice because it goes into your ear, three bones vibrate, this is all science, send the vibration to your brain and then your brain gets it. Right. It's exactly the same. Yeah. I wonder if that's one of the reasons too, that uh, often when people communicate, and I don't mean uh, like psychically, just, uh -huh. just in general, um, if uh, we misunderstand people, because the thing turns around here, and like you say, and then it goes here, and maybe it's not exactly what you said, but that's what we perceive you said. Exactly, and this is how dis you know, like um, disagreements happen and stuff. But in hu like the actual language and communication is huge. A lot of it's to do with what we look at, what we see, how we say something, how we perceive it, and then. People have a different map of the world and they will take something one way and another person will take it another way. So, yeah. but animals, that's what I love. See, I, I always say, my friend says I should have a t-shirt saying I don't do people because lots of people have got agendas and divorces and blah, 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 blah. Whereas animals are just so straightforward, you know, and I love that because there doesn't tend to be an agenda. They just want to chat in, you know, in the way, whatever they want to do. And they seem to be very honest. Am I correct in that? Yeah, in, in most cases, yes. Sometimes you'll get a case where they're in complete denial, like a person that does things and doesn't realise. I can remember years ago, a horse that was actually was saying, I'm this and I'm that and whatever. And she said, no, she's not. And she said she's actually aggressive. And she was aggressive to the people, to the other horses and stuff. But yeah, I was saying to her again, like, you know, tell me more. No, I'm so nice. But kind of sometimes you get it with people because their wiring's not quite the same. So right. they'll go out and want to punch somebody and stuff, but not realize what they're doing. So yeah. it goes on in the animal world as well. Yeah, because that's like when people are in denial yeah. about something, right? Yeah. And, or yeah. do not recognize that trait at all. You know, sadly, you know, it does go in the animal kingdom as well. Yeah. But less. How, less how would you um, be with an animal that have that trait? 
say the owner was experiencing problems with, um, say, say that horse, would you like negotiate with the horse? Would you counsel the horse to say, you know, what, what's going on? Let's go back to where this started. Is that, yes. is that how you would you, do that? Yeah, there's a difference. Like, kind of like if the animal knows it's doing it but can't help itself, then yes, then we work to where that's come from and often they're exhibiting behavior that's happened to them. So I said, well, you're actually doing what you didn't like that happened to you, kind of like a child. If they do not recognize the behavior like a human, it's very hard to then help them because all I do is sometimes just say like, you know, I'm being totally honest with you, your owner's struggling with the way you behave. If you continue like this, I don't know where you can go from there. I just, I'm honest about it. But if they don't recognize their own behavior, it's very hard to change because they don't recognize it. Have you, have you ever dealt with an animal that's been abused? Oh yes, yes. Oh, as soon as, as, soon as you say that, I get the most awful picture come into my head. Oh. But um, it's like, I can't read. Like anybody that puts on my Facebook page, they get kick, kicked off. I cannot read these things, the, the cruelty that happens to animals. Um, yeah. And I just say to people, don't put on Facebook because what you're doing is giving the people the platform that they want. Yes, exactly. <laughs> don't even get me started on that. <laughs> However, in my work, yes, I will get um, cases in that are horrific but I'm in a place to help. And, you know, I, I've had cases that, you know, I've actually got really upset, even though obviously I sh shouldn't, but just because the emotion, but when they've turned around, oh my goodness, it's just to me the most amazing thing. Yeah. You know? So I'm, I, I'm just in a position to be the sensible voice and try and undo. And also I'm qualified, I think, on NLP. And so I've learned techniques of like how you can, uh, like basically get the mind to get the focus off what they're focusing on and just basically go to the better thinking process as well. So lots of different things. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Jackie, entirely. I mean, I think animal abuse is just one of the most disgusting things in the world because exactly. I, mean, I, I think abusing humans is terrible. But yeah. there's something weird about abusing animals because sometimes they're defenseless. You yeah. Know? Unless you try abusing an elephant and then you're going to get stamped on. Exactly. But do you know one of the most abused animals are of horses? And do you know are why? They? Yeah. Why? Because they can't shout out loud. A dog will growl, a dog will bark, a cat will screech, whatever. Horses are basically silent. Mm. Yeah, so they, they just sort of go like, Nye. Well, they don't, you know, if, if they're in a difficult situation, often they won't make a sound. And horses do an amazing thing, and I wish people would recognize it. Sometimes a horse will resist and resist and resist for a good reason, but in the end, they just go, I'll take the easier option. They just shut down and do as somebody is trying to get them to do. And then people go, see, that's it. Dominate them, and then you'll get them to do it. They'll give in. Uh -huh. But often, an animal will resist for a very good reason. And I say logically, also, like, just... People use their brains in a way to think. A horse doesn't get up in the morning and suddenly go, do you know, I don't like going left anymore. <laughs> There's a reason why. So you kind of have to look at the logic of things. And they are the most forgiving, forgiving, wonderful animals. And they do yeah. so much, you know. Yeah, they give a lot of love. Um, I, I used to horse ride and I, I don't anymore. But um, they, I always remember that they are very sensitive. Yeah. And th th their head will come down and they'll nudge you or anything like that because they just want to sort of get to know you. Yeah, because love the lovely Jenny Seagrove that's in my book, she's actually got an animal sanctuary down outside London and she has little rescue ponies and stuff and they go to hospices and like for, and for disabled children and it's amazing the empathy you can see in these animals to these children is just oh it's just incredible yeah wow wow it's all about communication with the animal isn't it you know um i think uh, also in your book um i think it was was it matthew um, matthew reese matthew yeah. reese yeah, yeah. And uh, he, one of his horses, there was a problem. Did the horse say uh, he, he tries to get um, him to pick his foot, foot up? And he doesn't refuse to pick the foot up. He just hesitates before yeah. 
Uh, and I think you said that the horse told you that, well, he didn't know what he was doing. Why was he doing that? Is he trying to dominate me? So that just came when you said about that domination thing, yeah. you know. And because people just expect an animal to know. Whereas you wouldn't do it to a child. You wouldn't just walk up to a child and just pick up its foot. You'd say, <laughs> you, you wouldn't, would you? And no. people just think animals should know. So therefore, I always say, everything you're doing, just say what you're doing and see if it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, you know, and like, I think the more you talk to an animal, the more you treat them sort of as an understanding you, the better relationship you have. And it doesn't do any harm to, you know, to talk to them. No, and I think it's very therapeutic for a, a human to talk to uh, an animal because yeah. they help you through uh, different times and, too. And funny enough, somebody said to me, to, you know, it was yesterday doing a reading and it was about their dog and leaving the house and it just came up and she said, oh, but um, I was told you don't see anything when you leave. And I'm like, oh. why? Why wouldn't you say anything? This is what she's been instructed to do. And I said, but the laugh was actually, she gives it biscuits so it actually knows that when it has the biscuits, she's got to leave. <laughs> so, so I said, but you wouldn't walk out of a house and just, you know, leave like a, say a teenager, not say a word, just leave. You would just say, right, okay, I'm going out to work. I'll be back in three hours or whatever. Right. You know, just think. No, I agree with I just you. Say, think of those little people. I'm not saying humanize them because some people say that's wrong. But if you just talk to them like they understand because they do, you often find that, you know, things help. And just build an even better relationship. People come to me, even though they've got nothing wrong with their pets, just to hear what they've got to say. So it's just adding another dimension. When you hear them repeat, say something the owners said, it's like, whoa, they really do understand me. So then you land up saying more to them, knowing they understand. Yes, wouldn't it? Sorry about moving about. I'm just trying to get hold of um, Kimberly. Oh, uh, right, yes. Yeah, that um, you, um, you've chosen her out of the, the, the photographs yes. to read for. So I... back, back to Matthew Reese was like a really, if you get information that the owner doesn't know, but then becomes apparent, that's great proof because the only person that can tell you is the animal. And this happened was when I was chatting, I was in, I was in Shropshire, he was in Cardiff, and the horses were in California. And... Anyway, we're chatting to one of them and he's, he would show me the underneath of his foot. So I said to Matthew, has he got a problem with the underneath of his foot? And he went, mm, don't think so. And I think it was right before something. So no, don't think so. Anyway, um, he went back to California a few days later, went to the stable. And I know this because his friend told me. And um, he walked in and was like, oh my God. And he said, oh, it's all right. It's just an abscess. He says, no, 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 it's not that. He said, because I was in England talking to this girl who was telling me that this horse had got a problem with its foot. So it just utterly proved the only person that could have told us was the horse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. That... <laughs> and also this very sadness going on about um, the Mustangs in, in America, what they're, you know, rounding them up and whatever. So I hope that my story absolutely helped people realize what was going on but also that these are you know beautiful beings you know they're not you know they're wild animals that are just you know have souls and thought and and stuff so that was my effort there as well no, i think that's amazing yeah do you have uh, any stance i know this is slightly off topic but do you have any stance jackie on um like um meat eating or anything like uh, that are, are you are you more vegan no i'm not i'm not actually um i do eat meat i try and eat that you know an, like a, a chicken that's like free range had a decent life but i kind of think like you know all our dogs eat meat and stuff and it's just you know mm -hmm. the, the the way it is and then if we didn't eat meat we wouldn't have like say a cow in a field for three years you wouldn't have there'd be a lot of things would just disappear and kind of my point which people loads of people won't agree with but you kind of like every life is comes into this world or whatever that's supposed to and leaves this world in a way it's supposed to so as it applies to animals to humans whatever i kind of think that that's you know applies to like the food source as well and nobody has any problems with like a lion eating a zebra it's not pretty and i wish no. they wouldn't show it on tv but however it is to do with eating. And if we filled the planet with a load of vegetables and everything, there'd be no room for any animals. No, there wouldn't be. So there's a balance, yeah. 
No, I, that, that, yeah, that, that, that's a very good point, that it is a balance. And also, if a lion eats a zebra, I wonder if it gets stripes in its teeth. <laughs> I'll tell, tell you, this is actually true. And I just thought, oh gosh, you know, this would be a difficult one. This is a, somebody wrote to me for a reading and he said, my cat, I'm sure, was killed by a fox. Um, would you do a reading? And I thought, oh, this is going to be difficult. So anyway, I said, yes, no problem, I'll do it. So I tuned in with the, the cat and um, he was so, uh, it was just amazing the perspective he gave on it because he said about the fox, but he said, and he just put a picture of baby rabbits in front of me. And I said to the owner, he used to hunt rabbits. And he said, yes. And the cat simply turned around and he said, I was hunting, but so was the fox. <laughs> yeah. And you just think that's just, it's just what it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just, so it's, it's just a very amazing. fair perspective on it. Wow. Yeah. It, you know, it does. It puts a whole different um, perspective when you, because that's one of the questions that people ask me um, is, you know, what I think about the animal kingdom. Where do they go? You know, if, they, if we go to spirit, to the spirit world after we pass, where do animals go to? You know, and what they're same thoughts place. Are. And exactly the same place. And then the next question is always, well, the question that Michael asked, you know, well, what do you think about eating meat so i yeah. i'm really i want to use the words it's food for thought and yes. it is food for thought um, and really? the, the words that you've used because um that will certainly help me to explain to to others that ask me that question yeah uh, i've and never that, thought about it in that way yeah back to animals going in spirit in my um celebrity book there's um, a story and there's a racehorse trainer, well-known, trained for the Queen and stuff, um, and he's actually passed over. But um, when I chatted to him, he had a corgi um, that had been, uh, it had gone to spirit, but um, was given to him by the Queen. And he said the most fantastic line, and I will never forget it, and it just changes perspective again. He just said, and I just said, Toby, let me finish this line. He said, it's not rest in peace, it's rest in party. Can you imagine the reunions that happen here? <laughs> and you can imagine in spirit, you haven't seen somebody in time and spirit, there's no such thing as time, mm -hmm. but you'd be like, oh my God, here comes my sister, I haven't seen her for ages. Here comes my dog that I lived with for seven years. And you can imagine, and also watching other people, oh, here comes so-and-so, and you just yeah. think, it's beautiful, isn't it, when you think of it that way? Yeah, when you think of it that way, it is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Although I bet a lot of people uh, listening would probably think, I, I don't know, it's just the way I think, is that uh, when one passes, one doesn't really want to sit down and have a drink with Hitler or Stalin. <laughs> you know, that would, that like, would be awkward. Yeah, left out in the cold. So the, that is a, such a true saying. And they are, yeah. And it's <laughs> kind of like, I just, it's like families, like, say in the UK, so whoever's been, we have soul family, so whoever's in your soul family, say mm. on the living this side, then you just land up choosing, and there's huge space obviously, living with them that side. Yeah. So we do, like in life, we wouldn't want to associate with who we don't want to associate with, it's exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and like you said, with the animals too, things don't change when, no. when they pass over. No, and then That's again, true. they if they get injured or get very ill and stuff the amount of readings where they've come forward to the owner and shown them in a dream have been absolutely fine and you get one say i'm absolutely fine i can do this and i can do that and they're so pleased to have like their body and their rejuvenation back again that's so sweet yeah, it is well i don't think um kimberly is going to uh, be able to join us i've tried to get hold of her she's okay. in lanarkshire um, oh right, I used to live across that way in Scotland, oh. that's bizarre. Hmm. So uh, what I think we'll do, we'll rearrange it for her and yeah. then we'll, we'll do, because we'll, we're going to do this again anyway and as often as possible because we absolutely love talking to you and hearing all your fascinating stories. Um, so I'm, I'm going to say we shall see you in a few weeks time and um, I can't wait. Yes. Brilliant. Me, I, me, me, me too. I, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the next session. And yeah. in the next session, I'll report back to you, Jackie, in, in what I said to Oliver. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're subconscious from my point of view, but 
Yeah. Oh, so what I would what I would say if anyone is watching this, if you don't really talk talk to your animals, or there are loads of you will, try really just saying what you think, what you're doing, and stuff, and just see if your animal is actually even more responsive to you. Hmm. Everybody can communicate with their animal. The difference between me and them is I can hear back. Although lots of people are psychic, and I really think we should cover that as well. On, say from the animal's point of view because the amount of them that pass the information about their owners and that's how I started in the first place because my dog told me so yeah that's fascinating. great fascinating love talking yeah. to you yep me too so it's been enjoy as usual we'll see you in a few weeks time Mwah. perfect bye 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 bye, bye. bye. bye Jackie